Hi everyone, Kathy Arbor here. I'm doing a pan pastel drawing with colored pencils today and this is a photograph of Jensen Eccles from Supernatural. Um, I'm using some orange extra dark to do the outline areas of the face that are shadowed. Um, I like to do the, the shadowed areas first, kind of mapping out the face. So in this particular photograph, it's um, mostly on the right side of his face, under his nose where most people have a sh shadow no matter what, and around his eyes, um, top part of his lip a little bit, and his forehead on both sides. One side's a little more than the other. Um, I like to add just a little at a time and then go back and forth until I find the shading is the right um, darkness. Um, I will be adding some um, dark umber, I believe it is, or raw umber dark, extra dark. And um, these are for the really, really dark areas. They're almost black. So it's just basically back and forth um, with the pan pastels. You see it's getting a little bit darker now. Um, then I will be going in with um, raw sienna. It's kind of an orangey color to uh, blend this all together a little bit. Everybody's face is a different um, tone of color. It can be uh, fair, pale, dark. So you really have to decide on the colors yourself. Um, there is no one specific um, palette that everybody uses. Everybody's different. So you're going to have to experiment to see what colors are what was meant for your particular uh, photograph that you'll be doing. Okay, and then um, See, it's starting to come up together a little bit more. Um, that's orange tint that I'm using, so it's a little lighter, so it blends all the other dark areas together. Um, still looks a little patchy, but with every coat and layer that you put on, it smooths out more and more. Um, the paper I'm using also, this was a drawing that I had done. And I actually photocopied it on just plain copy paper. So, as you can see, you really don't need a lot of tooth with these uh, pan pastels. They're very pigmented. So now I'm just adding it all together, blending it a little more so that it's not so... Um, define the areas they need to blend into each other so I have pretty well put it all over um, that was titanium white that I'm using now and I'm just putting it in the highlight areas um, this is an eraser it's one of the hard erasers Stedler eraser so I'm removing some of the pan pastels where the highlights are very strong just so that I can put uh, a little bit more white on top. The white um, is a little bit harder to put on top of a dark color but the nice thing is you can erase so you can remove those um, highlight areas and then put your white on. So you can see where I've uh, actually 
put the white on and smoothed it into the uh, orangey section so it's it's gradual shading um, again I said back and forth back and forth so I added a little bit more of the uh, raw umber extra dark on the side of the cheek there there is a really strong dark uh, shadow there The more you um, add layers, the softer and the more blended your photograph or drawing will look. There I go again, adding uh, some more dark to that really dark shadowed area. Too, when you're blending you tend to um, rub in or rub off some of the dark areas so you do have to add again all of this can be fixed with an, um, a fixative just adding some uh, more dark areas to the eyes and the mouth he has a bit of a frown so uh, He's got some more shadows around there and highlights. This is a much quicker way of doing a portrait, um, I found, that um, if you had to do it all with pencil crayon, it would be hours and hours and hours to get that blended look. Now what I'm using here is actually violet light. Um, a lot of people's lips has a violet or uh, what they call in pencil crayons clay rose and uh, it's more of a natural look when you use that. You can also use it a little bit around the eyes and the nose. Your nose and cheeks tend to have a little bit more pink or mm, purplish tinge to it I guess you could say um, you really have to pay attention to color in faces there are a lot of colors that you wouldn't really think that would be in a face um, like blues and greens yellow so it's all about seeing and really looking and concentrating on what colors would be in on that face and you got to think that these colors are also layered so when you are putting the blue in you got to remember you're probably going to be putting um, another shade of um, beige over top to blend it in properly it's all experimenting um, that's how I learned I, I knew very little of pan pastels or crayon or pencil crayons or colored pencil however you want to say it um, but you just got to do in order to find out uh, right now I'm using the colored pencil and this is uh, a dark brown uh, it's almost black it's a very, it's a prisma color and it's got a very very sharp point on it and I'm doing his beard so when you're doing a beard you have to pay attention to the way the hairs are laying if you don't do that it won't look realistic it's very important to have the hairs lying the right direction it's like an animal when you're doing fur uh, they have to be in the right direction for it to look proper um, and when you're going around see I'm going around the base of his chin so because you're viewing him in that way um, most of the hairs will look clustered on the edge of his chin um, the pencil I'm using there is raw sienna 
Um, he does have a little bit of a uh, auburn tinge to his hair. So that's another thing you have to pay attention. Um, it's just not one color, his beard. There's um, highlights in his hair, in his beard. There's darker areas, um, mid-tones. So you gotta do that with your hair also. That pencil I'm using right now is called Clay Rose. It's excellent pencil for um, using on your skin. Uh, a lot of times I use it for lips and um, adding a bit of a rose tinge to the cheek or uh, the lid of the eye sometimes is a little bit uh, rosier. Um, also there's a lot of a shadow when it comes to drawing a, a nose. There's no real definite line in a nose. It's all about shadow. Uh, this uh, pencil crayon that I was using there was a gray, French gray, 50%. Uh, um, there's French gray is kind of a um, uh, it's an odd shade it, depending on the percentage you can get into kind of um, more on the brownish gray side and they're they're also good for uh, skin tones because there is a kind of a gray tinge when you get into the shadowing of, of uh, different areas that's the shadow of the lip underneath your lip The inside of the eye is a little bit pink. Um, not the eyeball, but the skin, um, the lid. The thickness of your bottom lid will show um, when you're drawing or if you look at somebody, you can see the thickness of, of the skin of the lid, a bottom lid. lid. And uh, that's usually a pinkish color. And then your eyelashes are drawn from the outside of that thickness, not the inside, the outside. So here I am just adding a little bit more to the mid-tones of the uh, shaded areas actually. So you don't want to just darken that light. It, um, you need to gradually shade it out so you've got mid-tones also in your shading. the lips I always like to do a little bit of line work so your line if you notice a person's lips there's usually faint lines that run up and down on their lips so that's always a good way of drawing or coloring with your pencil it gives it a more realistic look That's um, also another color of beige that I'm using in the lips. You can also use beige for um, blending other colors together. Um, as you can see, I used purple there because there is a bit of purple in your lip. And then I put a beige on top of that purple just to blend it in. Some people like using uh, colorless blenders, but I prefer using a lighter color. There, the opening of his mouth there is, um, don't use black. Uh, black isn't, um, it's too dark. It will look fake. Um, use a really dark burgundy or purple, dark, dark purple is better. Um, it'll look more realistic. I hope this is helping somebody. Um, again, I'm self-taught in this area and uh, I just like to help you guys uh, figure things out. Um, it takes me a while to think of what colors to use or you know how to how to approach it with um, two different mediums you know do I do pencil first do I do pan pastels so the 
pan pastels I found was easier to start with than the pencil. Um, so I always like to share and uh, help people out, gives them a little head start on instead of, uh, you know, having all the fails and <laughs> try it, fail, try, fail. You know, if I can help you skip over some of that, um, testing then that's great um, but if you're somebody that needs to try it yourself then you know by all means go ahead this is uh, what I have found anyways so I hope it helps you and uh, I really enjoyed this process um, I did see somebody do this uh, on Facebook I believe she's a a pop artist, uh, is it Sheena Pike, I think her name is, and uh, she does some fantastic uh, drawings of faces and stuff. So I thought I would give it a go and uh, I really like it. Um, it saves a lot of time. Yeah, and you just, you know, back and forth, back and forth, uh, different colored pencils, blending, more shading, a little bit of highlighting. That's a white uh, Prismacolor pencil that I'm using here to um, add a little more bright white to the areas or lighten some areas. Again, you know, try not to do it all at once. Um, I find that you get to a point you don't see your mistakes, so it's always good to you know, after a few hours, take a break, go have a coffee, go have lunch or dinner or whatever, or quit for the day. Come back to it the next day or next week. And um, you'll actually see where you need to improve. Um, I find that so helpful for me. Uh, I never finish uh, something like this, this type of portraiture in one day. Um, I always take a while to do because you do see these things. Uh, that's the uh, white that I'm using to add some highlighted um, whiskers. So they're shining and it gives it a more realistic look when you add a few white ones. It doesn't mean he's going gray, it's just highlighted from the light. around the eye there's some uh, fairly light areas from the skin being oily or wet um, or in, inside the eye also you'll see a little bit of white shine. Those little things are the things that make uh, a face look real. Now this is um, I'm just doing the inside corners of his eyes, which are a little more on the red side. Gives that a reality look. And the whites of the eyes are never white. Never true white. Everybody thinks that they are, but they're not. Um, they're actually a little on the grayish blue side. So, And then they're shadowed because of your upper lid is shadowing the top part of your eye wall. So it's all about viewing and really, really paying attention to what you're seeing. So again, back and forth, back and forth. A little highlight, a little bit more shading. And that's how you get your 3D look by the shading and the highlights. It's the little things that count. It's all about the detail. And there's your top lip step is out. Um, not flat it sticks out so the the very uh, outline of your lip is usually a highlight in some way 
Um, so don't make a line for your lip. Incorporate it into your skin tone. These are the things I've learned over the years that you know you catch after a while. They uh, improve in your drawing skills. There, see, I'm using um, a nice. I believe that's 50% French gray. It's kind of a bluey gray shade. It's a very unusual shade, and his eyes are uh, really unusual. Mm, greenish color, hazel green. Um, so I'm using um, a light brown, there's a green, there's a little bit of gold in his eye, and then uh, kind of shade them all together to give that eye look. I'll show you a close up in a minute. I love doing eyes. Um, they're my favorite part in portraiture. Just seems to come alive once you get the eyes done. Yeah, and uh, one of the biggest um, important things to get right is eyelashes. You don't necessarily see every single eyelash um, in this particular um, photograph. You only see a dark outline in his eye. You just might see a few very, very faint ones on his bottom lids, but it's just a thick line that's on the top part. It's not necessarily a lash. There we go. So if you put, you know, a bunch of lines in as eyelashes, it just ruins the look. So really pay attention to how the eyelashes are going. If you see the eyelashes themselves, then pay attention to which way they're going and if they're straight or if they're crooked and where they start and where they end because that's very important for a realistic um, portraiture. shading and do a little bit of his eyebrows. His eyebrows are very close to his eyes. And again, you only see a little bit of single um, eyebrow hairs. And again, in the high eyebrows, there are some highlights. So you got to remember to put some highlights in those eyebrows also. Make sure you have a very, very sharp pencil. I'm sharpening my pencil quite a bit. Now I've just done just a little dab, just dabs. They're very faint. Um, you don't want thick lines, so just very, very, very faint. And then I'm blending them with the uh, cream color. A little bit more purple in the eyelid there. So it's back, a lot of back and forth. There, adding a little 
little bit more um, color to that shaded area. Okay, this is a Sharpie poster paint um, water um, marker and it's extra fine. I like using these to get those bright white areas in the eye, um, the little glints of shine that you see and it just makes them come alive. Same with the lip. You get those moist lips and um, the white glint off of them, the nose, forehead, around the ears sometimes. Makes a big difference. I'm just rubbing, sometimes I'll scribble a little area if it's a large area I have to put in. Um, so I just scribble it a little bit and then use my finger to smudge it in. Or if it's too too um, defined and I want it a little bit blurry, then I'll put my finger down on it. There we go. So it just looks like wet lips. Adding a few more of the hairs. And just doing a few little touch-ups here. There you go. A few little more whiskers, a little highlight. Now I think I'm going to try to do some hair. Um, I'm doing the dark areas first with pan pastels. This is the uh, raw umber extra dark. And again, go with the direction of the hair. Very important. And you'd like to, you know, take it into the skin a little bit of the color. He has a very uh, neat looking um, haircut, so there's no mess. 